Have you ever had trouble managing your database indexes? There's a bunch of reasons why this could be, right? Maybe you just have a ton of indexes and you're not really sure which ones are being used regularly. Maybe you have one index that you made for one particular query and you don't know for sure how it's being used, how often it's being used, if it's being used. This can be figured out using just vanilla MySQL stuff, right? Things like using explain or explain analyze, using the performance schema tables that are a built-in part of MySQL. And that can work great, but that process can also be a little bit tedious. So. PlanetScale has come up with a new tool to help give you even deeper insights into your indexes and when they're being used and when they're not being used. And this is in the insights panel. You can actually now go and when you click on a query, there's a new tab where you can look at what indexes are being used by this query and what percentage of the time those are being used. So let's jump in and take a look. I've gone ahead and connected to my PlanetScale database from the command line here. And just so you know, if you ever want to do something like this, a great way to connect is after authenticating with your pscale command line, you can do a pscale connect, connect to the database and branch that you want, and it'll give you an address that you can then connect to using whatever command line client you want, like just the MySQL client or MyCLI, which is what I'm using here. So connected to the database, and I've got a couple of tables here already. I'm going to show you this table post. So let's say show create table post. This is one of the tables I have in here. And so this has a few columns, right? Post ID, email, post, hidden, a couple of date times. And so this is something that I'm going to play around with here and I'll do a select count from this post table. And it's got what? 220,000 rows in it. So I have already run a couple of queries that basically have the following pattern. I'll bring over this query that I have prepared. So select star from post where email like something, right? And with like, you can put a regular string in there or some kind of pattern in there. So I could say like Ben, there's nothing that's exactly like that. But if I did like a percent here, it shows me things that start with Ben and then can end with anything else because that percent is like a wild card there, right? And I'll just run this again with something like uh, this. Okay, so there's some other results. So if I go and look in Planet Scale Insights, what do you think I'll see in terms of how often this is using an index? Because I also have an index on this, show indexes from the post table. Uh, let's actually format it like this so it's a little bit easier to see with that backslash G. So I have uh, one with the post ID, so that's the primary key of this, but I also have one on email, which is what I'm querying for with this query. And then I also have post email and created an index. So I have several indexes that relate to that are on this table, right? But particularly for this one here, the post email index, right? Because this one, I only have a where clause on that email where it's searching for a pattern. And what do you think is the percentage of time that that index is being used for this query? So I'm over here in Planet Scale Insights and what you can do to figure this information out is go down and you can look at queries that have run recently. I'm actually gonna refresh here. Let's go look for the one I just did, which was an email uh, with that like statement. So it's gotta be yeah, right here. So I can click on this one and there's actually a new tab over here now. So it's this indexes tab. I can click on that. And down here you can look and see, okay, this percentage of the time, 57% of the time it used post email index. And then some other percentage of the time it used post email created at index for executing this query. So one, this is a really nice way to very quickly see which indexes are being used and what percentage of the time they're being used to fulfill these queries. Uh, in the particular case of what I was running, right, you might say, well, this index here maybe is excessive, right? If I'm not filtering by created at index, then I shouldn't need that index at all. So if this were the whole universe, I could probably delete that index, but you also have to be careful about deleting indexes because you never know, or you can figure out if there's any other queries uh, using that index. And you should always check that before dropping an index because it could be important for something else. But let's focus on this one for the time being. And the interesting thing is it doesn't use that index all the time every time this query gets executed. So why is that? Well, we can go back over to here 
And let's run it a couple of times with some things. So I'm gonna say Sally percent, get some results there. But if I run this same thing and I put the percentage at the beginning, so things that end with Sally, which as you might imagine, we're probably not gonna get any results, but let's try things that end with .com. Okay, we actually returned too many rows there, so let's try something that there's probably less of, .net. Okay, so this is gonna return us a bunch of results here. But when you have a wildcard at the very beginning of your index, or I'm sorry, at the beginning of your search term and the like like this, it can't use a regular B tree index because the B tree index, it needs to be able to look at the start of the string and that's what it's sorting by from the beginning of the string to the end. And this is allowing anything at the beginning as long as it ends in .net. So if I go back over and refresh over here, we'll probably see some changed stats. Yeah, so the percentage of time that it used that index went down a little bit and the count here went up. And that's because this index is not able to get used in all situations. It's only able to utilize this in certain situations where the beginning of that string that I'm searching for with like is not a wildcard, where it's a hard-coded string that it can actually use the B tree index to filter out results for. Scenario number two. Let's take a look at this query here, a little bit of a longer one on that same post table. So select post ID, email and hidden from post, and then I have some where conditions. So I have a where condition for the uh, email being between two strings and also for the created at date time being between two strings. So here is one example of that query. I'll go ahead and run it. it takes a little bit of time. Let's see how many results. So it had 8,000 results that returned. Now recall, I'm gonna do a show indexes from the post, uh, and it'll do backslash G. From the post table, again, we have our primary key index there on the post ID. We have post email index, so that's an index only on the email address. We have post email created at index, so that's a composite index with email and created at. There is one index that's only on email, and then there's other indexes that are on email and created at. So, what do you think it's gonna do depending on what we execute? Well, we'll execute this one again, just for funsies. That one had 8,000 results. And I'm gonna execute a few others. I've got a couple different variations of this that have different result set sizes already prepped. So we've got one here where I change up the range a little bit. This is a really small result set. And then I'm gonna run a couple others here. So this is one where the result set's gonna get a little bit bigger. Uh, date range is the same, but it's just a wider set of names. So that one has 3,000 results. So I'm gonna go over here and we need to find that query from that I was just executing. So that one would be this one, right? It has two between. So I'm gonna click on this and I'm gonna go over to the indexes tab. And then here, what do we see? So we actually see that it's using post email index 50% of the time and it's using post email created at index 50% of the time. So even though it has that filtering on both the email column and the created at index, it's not choosing to use post email created at index all the time. That's kind of interesting. So why are we getting that? So let's take a look at the explain analyzes for a couple of these queries. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this one first. So this is the one that was between Agatha and Alamo, and then between, let's see, February and May of 2024. So if I do an explain on this, you can see that it is saying using index condition using where. Um, let's actually format this, again, a little bit more nicely. Got the font really big. So we've got simple possible keys. It shows a couple possible keys, but I actually wanna do an explain analyze on these so that I can see what it actually would use. So analyze, run this. And what we can see is that it did an index range scan using post email index. So that's kind of interesting that it chose to use that one and there's no mention of the post email created at index. And a part of the reason for this, or a big part of the reason for this, is that MySQL keeps track of information about its indexes, including cardinality. So things like number of unique values in a column, it knows how big your tables are, all these kind of things. And one of the things that it probably is doing is it sees, hey, this between range is a very narrow range, right? One of these names begins with AG, one begins with AL. So just this is already gonna return a pretty small result set. So there's not really a need for me to use the bigger index. The result set is gonna be so small from that filtering that it can just scan all of the rows it gets in the result, which is gonna be very small. 
to figure out which ones are between the appropriate date range, right? But let's try one with a slightly different range that's gonna be a little bit bigger, right? A, W for that ending range. So this one, because it's gonna return a slightly bigger range from this, it's choosing to say, use the post email created at index. So that can actually do a filter based on both of those values within one index. And the way that the MySQL query planner works is it just decides, hey, in this case, it's worth it using the bigger index, but I'll be able to filter on both of those in order. So for this one, it has a very wide range, right? All the people between John and Zachary, and this is a pretty wide date range as well. So this is gonna be a very large result set. And if I do the explain analyze on here, you can see it's actually choosing to not even use a index at all based on this, right? Table scan on post, there's no mention of using an index at all. Now, one thing I do wanna try here is this. Let's see if that changes things. Okay, yes. So if I put a limit, 100,000, which is what I did on that, uh, it does change to decide to say I'm using an index range on post email index. So why did it change because I put a limit on it? Well, putting a limit on it is gonna affect the result set size. I'll run this query, uh, the one without the limit, and I'll run this with select here. We're actually probably, actually I don't know if we'll get an error, we'll see, no. So it works out okay, we get 39,000, and so we'll come back over here and see what Insights says about that. Okay, so uh, the stats updated a little bit, it must have actually used an index, but what Planet Scale actually does under the hood, it has sort of a safety feature built in, which is it doesn't allow you by default to return more than 100,000 rows from a query. And this might seem kind of annoying at first, but this is actually really good, because in a production database that's powering an application, you probably never want to return more than 100,000 rows. In fact, it's probably you're probably doing something wrong if you are. In fact, you should probably never be returning more than 1,000 or 10,000 rows at a time. What Vitesse is actually doing is it's rewriting the query behind the scenes with a limit on it so it doesn't return too big of a result set. So even though Explain Analyze said, hey, I'm actually not gonna use an index because Vitesse rewrote the query a little bit for this purpose of optimization and safety, it actually was able to use the index behind the scenes. All right, that's it. I hope you learned some interesting things about indexes and how you can use PlanetScale to get really powerful insights into the indexes you're using. Thank you for watching this video. I appreciate you being here. I appreciate you taking the time to hopefully learn something useful from me. Take care and I'll see you in the next one.